G'day guys and welcome to this video on the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. Oh, now, there have been a number of videos on this. The binomial distribution, discrete data, and wow, they were good. Now, if you haven't already watched it, there's the video coming up over there. Yeah, sadly, you can't click it. That's a graphic. Um, but I'll put a link in the, in the show notes, as it were, uh, to help you do this. But we're now going to use a general idea of using the normal approximation, which we've just dealt with on a different video, to help us solve binomial problems. You want to say, well, can I do that? Well, as I say here, let's take a little trip down memory lane, making it smaller so the graph fits on. If you remember, when we did the video with regards to binomial data, when we had 20 trials and a probability of 0 0.1, we got a fairly jagged graph, as you showed here. And what we found was, as the number of trials increased, so did the number of data items between. And in this graph shown here, we start to see that actually it becomes much more like the normal curve, right? It's squidged in, but it is still normally distributed. This had 100 trials and a probability of success of 0 0.1. Now, what you need to know is that to have a probability less than 0 0.1, basically you cannot use the normal distribution uh, to approximate binomial data, right? There's another test coming up as well. But the point of it is, we found out that the expected value was simply found by the value of the number of trials times the value of p. Now, in this situation, that was 100 times 0 0.1, which gave me 10, which just so happens to be where that graph there is peaking. Uh, have I met my peak? Have I got to my peak? Hopefully not. But if you remember, what does the expectation of x also stand for? It stands for mu. Hey, that's, hold on a moment, mu. We know with the normal distribution, if I know what mu and sigma is, I can find all sorts of values, data points, areas, probabilities, the works. Aha, uh -huh. I can see something happening here. And then basically we moved on to the idea that actually if we had a bigger value of p of 0 0.3, while the fact is that the mean still stays as n times p, our standard normal distribution looked a little bit better. It was more sort of centered. But the highlight of all of this is that with a sufficiently large number of n and p, or a sufficiently large number of n, then we can use the normal distribution to approximate the binomial distribution. Now again, what is the binomial distribution? If you remember, it is something where there are only two outcomes, a success and a failure. So to be able to use the normal distribution, all we really need to know, if you remember, is our value of mu and sigma. We already know that mu is given by NP, so how do we find the value of sigma? And the great thing, for this particular lesson and this particular course is I don't need to show you because it's way outside the expectation to be able to do so. I'd love to. But in this situation, we're just going to put it down to magic. And we're going to say that someone somewhere has worked through this diligently to come up with the idea that the standard deviation is given by the square root of n p 1 minus p. That's literally all you need to know. So for a binomial distribution, where we have successes and failures, if I know the number of trials that have happened and the probability of success, I can now use the normal distribution to find all sorts of probabilities. And here is an example from the Cambridge Essentials textbook series, which as I say pretty much every lesson I'm using to teach my kids. And as these lessons are primarily uh, for the kids and anyone on YouTube who happens to sample across and find them, then it's a really, really good resource. So a sample of 1,000 people, hmm, hold on a moment, 1,000 people. That seems to suggest that my value of n might be 1,000. We're asked to indicate whether or not they were in favor of the construction of a new freeway. Now. I now know this is binomial because they were asked whether they were in favor, which would imply they would not be in favor. So there are two outcomes. It is known that 30% of people in the city are in favor of the new freeway. Probability of success is now 0 0.3. Find the approximate probability that between 270 and 330 people in the sample were in favor of the new freeway. So X is basically stands for they're in favor. So I'm looking for the probability that x falls between 270 and 330 people. Well, there's a lower bound. 
there's an upper bound. Can I find my mu and sigma? Because I can now use my standard normal distribution, my normal distribution to help me do this. Right, so we know that mu is given by NP, which is 1000 times 0 0.3. And as you can happen to see here, rather than bring up my calculator, I have some rather nifty screenshots. So there's my 300, thank you very much. I know that sigma is given by the square root of 1000 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.7. Those values there always have to add up to 1. So again, what does that give me? Well, I've left it in a third form for the moment rather than decimal so that I don't move decimal points. Then using that information, I have, as we have done before, loaded up my CAS calculator, gone interactive, distribution, continuous. Now, it's not an inverse. They're not giving me a probability. They're not giving me a percentage. They're asking me for a probability. So I don't use the inverse norm. I use the norm and again, CDF, because I want a range of uh, probabilities. My lower is 270, my upper is 330, my sigma, remember, yes, is the square root of 210. And the great thing about the cash class, you can put square roots in. And my mean works out to be 300. Enter, incorrect number of arguments. That is because I've missed off a bracket there. That was remiss. Gives me a probability of zero. 0.9616 to four decimal places. See how freaking awesome this is? Well, actually, that's the only question. This is a pretty short lesson because there's not too much to it. We already know how to use binomial. We already know how to use the normal distribution. We just have to make sure that with any question that you do, that you know whether it's binomially distributed or not. If it is, N and P. Now, when can we use the normal distribution? Well, this is the rule. When n times p is greater than five, or when n times q is also greater than five. So when those two things are actually both true, so that n times p and n times q is greater than five, then we can confidently use the binomial, uh, sorry, the normal distribution to approximate the binomial distribution. If not, I'm afraid it's back to the stuff that was in that video being shown over there. Ladies and gentlemen, nice short one today. Um, hopefully it's been helpful. I may add other videos with different questions as they come up, but maybe some exam style questions questions. As ever, it's really, really good to have you watch my videos. Thank you so much for taking the time to do so. If you can, I'd be deadly, deadly grateful, or deeply grateful, not deadly, uh, deeply grateful if you'd actually get the word out there and sort of tell your friends about them. If you are here via YouTube and you haven't already done so, please do me a favour and subscribe. Oh, thank you so much. If you have, don't worry if you haven't. If not, there is a video for you to watch, another one. It's been good seeing you. Thanks very much. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.